Okay, hi everyone. What I'm going to do in this presentation is walk you through a weighted average process costing problem. In other words, we're doing process costing, but we're using and we're and we're using the weighted average method. Okay, now there's some information that's provided to you in this problem. Those are the ones given in exhibits. So we're talking about the shaping and milling department for May. This is exhibit 47. And there's the information you can see on the screen. With regards to beginning work and process, we had 200 units. Um, of the units, they were 50, 55% done or complete. The work was done with respect to materials and 30% with respect to the conversion costs. Um, the cost and beginning inventory are given here, 9655 for a total cost and beginning work and process of 15175 And again, <clears throat> this information has to be given to you. And then they tell you that they started into production 5,000 units, completed 4,800 of them, and transferred them out. And then here was the cost that were added during the period. Okay, so we had material and conversion cost added. And then at the end of the, end of the period, um, we know that there was 400 units still in process. 40% <clears throat> of it was done, completed with respect to materials, and only 25% um, with respect to conversion. Okay, so the first thing we've got to calculate or, or to put into perspective is an accounting of our units. All right, and then we come over here. Um, and we have to have this information. So the beginning work and process was 200, and this is part of the solution you're going to put together. You're going to calculate the percent complete and put this in a form that uh, allows you to complete the entire problem. All right, so the beginning work and process is 200 units taken right from Exhibit 4-7, and they told us it was 55 and 30 percent done. So we jot those percentages in our percent complete column, one for materials, one for conversion. They tell us that units started into production was 5,000, it's given here, and then the units that were transferred during the month of May was 4,800, that comes from right here, so that means the, the, the units that were completed and transferred must be 100%. Okay, we're always assuming that if we're done with it, we're done, it's 100% complete. The ending work in process is, was 400, given here, 40% done as for materials and 25% done for conversion, given there and there. Okay, so once we have that scheduled together, um, then we can move on to the next step. And the next step is calculating the equivalent units of production. So what we do is we list two columns for materials and conversions and we figure out what were the units transferred to the next department. Well, that came from our previous schedule of 4,800 units, right? 4,800 units were 100% complete, so we use 100% of those units. Then we have to calculate the equivalent units of what was left in inventory. And we knew that we had 400 units that were 40% complete, because we've listed it in this table. So if we multiply 400 times 40%, we get 160 units that goes into our calculation of equivalent units for materials and we take the 400 units times 25 percent that comes from the percent complete that was given to us and we would put it in this nice table up here so 400 times 25 percent is 100 then we just add down so now we've calculated the equivalent units of production 4960 units for materials 4900 for conversion now we need those numbers to go to the next step and the next step is to determine the cost per equivalent units. So we start off by taking the cost of beginning work and process inventory, and they gave that amounts here, 9,600 for materials, 5,575 for conversion. We put that into our two columns. Then we need to list the costs that were added. They told us 368,600 was added during the period for materials, 350,900 for conversions. Add that, we now come up with the total cost. Now we simply have to divide by the equivalent units that we calculated previously. So there's our 4960 and our 4900. That becomes 
the denominator in our division. Now we take the cost divided by the equivalent units of production for either materials or conversion, and we come up with a cost per equivalent unit, and that we need. Then we can move on to the next step. I'll slide up here and show you that now that we have the 76.25 cost per equivalent unit for material and 72.75 for conversion, we're going to use that in the next schedule. And the next schedule is a schedule of cost of, it tells us the cost of ending work and process and the units transferred out. So again, we do material and conversion, but now we can add a total column to this. And we say, well, what was the ending work and process inventory? So we take the equivalent units of production, and for material, it's the 160 that we used previously. For conversion, it's the 100, right? That's the ending work and process amounts, and we multiply it times the cost per equivalent unit that we just calculated, and we, and we come up with the value of ending work and process. All right, we'll need that for next period. And then the cost of the units that were transferred was the 4,800 units, and those get multiplied by the 7,625 and the 7,275, the current month's um, you know, cost per equivalent units. And that gives us the total uh, dollar amount of the units transferred and out. Okay, And then finally, we can put together a cost reconciliation, which just lists the total cost to make sure we've accounted for everything. We've got the cost. Um, of beginning work in process, 15175. Now that came from um, oh, exhibit 47. I don't think I even, oh, here it is, yeah. 15,175. Okay, so that 15,175 is what goes there. And then the cost added to production, the 719,500, came from right here, also given in the problem. So what we do is we say, all right, now we have the total costs, and we've got to account for it. Let's make sure we've accounted for all of it. And so we say, well, 19,475 of that is still in ending inventory, and the remainder was the costs, cost that's transferred out. Okay, I want to cover two other things here. The cost per equivalent unit with the weighted average method is an averaging. You take the cost of the beginning work and process plus the cost of what you added and divided by the equivalent units. That's how weighted average works. It's different from the FIFO approach, but weighted average is far more common in practice. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is why do we go to all this effort? And, um, and the reason we go to all this effort is we need these dollar amounts to make the necessary journal entries in the ledger. right? And we, we go to all this effort essentially to, you know, a credit work in process from the last department that's completed and debit work in process to the next department or perhaps debit finished goods if it was the last um, process that was being completed. And by the way, I am using the word process and department to mean the exact same thing. Different companies use different terminology. Okay, so that's a walkthrough of uh, how this example shows you how you start with the beginning information and work all the way through to calculating your, your cost per equivalent unit and how much dollars you have in um, ending inventory and what was transferred out. Okay, I hope you found that beneficial.